topic for today is chapter 13 types of in this case. So, so here are our learning objectives. Explain and differentiate the five different types of business organization. Describe multinational and transnational companies. Describe transfer pricing. Identify and explain the three sectors of the Philippines, such as agriculture, industries, and services. Realize how land reform law created entanglements that hamper natural production. And analyze the effects of the activities of illegal miners on legitimate mining companies. So, so I've already sent to the GC uh, the picture of chapter 13 of the lessons of the book. So we begin with our quotation of the day. So the law actually uh, uh, first is that life without industry is guilt and industry without art is brutality. So this one is by John Ruskin, way back in 1870. A slightly more modern version. No? It's a different quotation on the other hand. Business is a beautiful mechanism to solve problems. So one quotation is about industry and the other quotation is about business. So first we have a recap of Orgman, FABM, saka yung FABM. Types and forms of business organization. So I'm sure uh, meron naman na kayo idea ko ano mga different types of business organizations. So ito yung mga na-discuss sa Orgman and FABM 1 and 2. No? The first four, which are single proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and cooperative. So here are the features. So yung cell phone ko na wala. So here are the features of the first four. No? So, ito yung mga nandun sa book ng Orgman as well as FABM 1 and 2. No? Single proprietorship, partnership, corporation, cooperative. What are the features of each? No? So, for single, there's the one owner called the proprietor. There's unlimited liability and the owner, owner manages the business. Okay, sabihin lang ako kung nawawala yung signal. Kasi yung Okay. Okay, so bumalik yung signal. Okay. For the partnership, on the other hand, there are two or more members. There's unlimited liability. There's a managing partner. And may also be used to exercise a profession. Profession such as accountancy, engineering, law, and medicine, among others. Corporation, of course, you already know this. Ulitin lang natin. So for the corporations, sorry, there are unlimited owners called shareholders. The limited liability and management is vested on the board of directors. So, cooperative is similar to corporation. Rather than shareholders. Which is the social enterprise. So, it can be challenging to define. But it learns, blurs, sorry. The lines and goals of business, government, and nonprofit sectors. So, para siyang chapsui ng tatlo, no? Business, government, and nonprofit. And also, social enterprise, unlike the non uh, government organization or nonprofit, is self sustaining. Yun yung major difference. Yan. So, again, recap na lang to. So, I just showed you. The advantages and disadvantages of each uh, each form of business organization. So here are the advantages and disadvantages of single proprietorship. 
Uh, okay. For the partnerships, there are the four types. So, recap na yan. Uh, FABM1 and Orgman. So, for the book, no, here are some uh, example of partnerships in the Philippines. So, Ortigas and Company. No? Uh, Ortigas and Company is just one of the companies that is considered as an exception to the rule. Because usually, you establish a partnership for a profession. For example, sa accountancy, ano ba yung nakasikap? You have the SGP. Huh? Ano yung huh? So, aside from accountancy, there's also the uh, other professions. Nabanggit ko na kanina. So, si Ortigas and Company, siya lang yung uh, outlier wherein they are establishing a partnership for a business. And fortunately for them, it is a tried and true formula. Tried and tested and successful formula. So they decided to remain a limited partnership. So again, pakita lang natin ulit, advantages and disadvantages of the different forms of partnerships. So you have the general partnership and the limited partnership. So we will focus on the limited partnership because of Ortigas and, Com uh, Ortigas and Company. So as you can see, there are lesser advantages and disadvantages. Advantages of which mostly partners in old line professions. So yun yeah. uh, <clears throat> sorry, Ortigas is the exception to the rule. The owners are not personally liability for the malpractice of other part. So whatever happens. Oh, okay. And disadvantages, no recap lang natin ulit. Owners or the partners remain personally liable for many types of obligations. So let's say si Ortigas and company, nagkaroon sila ng problem with regards to some of their ventures, then pwede mo that's one of the biggest disadvantages of the limited partnership and often limited to a profession. Again, Ortigas is okay. sabihin lang ako kung choppy, no? So here are the other forms, limited liability and limited liability. So you can just read, read this. We're already in your orgman and your FABM subject. Uh, your our focal topic is from the book itself. So this one for the corporations, there are two types. You have the publicly listed and the close end corporation. So what are the difference between the two? Of course, si public, pwede ka mag-invest. And then si close, hindi ka pwede mag-invest. Ay, nakakawag pa yan. So again, advantages and disadvantages of corporations. So pinakita ka na lang. I will not uh, elaborate any further. Pinagdaanan na natin yan. And cooperative. So meron din yan dun sa FABM. So copy-paste lang siya technically. Okay. So for the corporate ownerships and board of directors, so for the ownership, in order to be a majority owner, you must own 51% of the company equity. More than half. Hindi pwede yung saktong 50. You must have it as 51. And for the super majority, you must own and 
an extension yung mga proxy mo up to 67% of the corporate stock of the company. So let's say could be considered as a super majority owner of Ayala Land or Ayala Corporation. Sorry. Uh, you must have ownership or meron ka mga kakampe worth 67% of the corporate stock. Ganun ang scenario ng ownership. And then for the B BOD or Board of Directors, it comprises of the members of the board, you know, ranging from 5 to 15. So usually, ang minimum is 5 and the maximum is 15. And they must meet regularly, monthly or quarterly. Pero usually quarterly. And why do they meet quarterly? Mag-uusapan yung walang kamatayang financial statements. How is the company doing? What is the financial health of the business? Hindi naman sila mag-meet quarterly para magkwentuhan lang. So corporate entities, nasa book din to. Don't worry. So the economists have traditionally assumed that the goal of the firm is to maximize profit and reduce cost and liability. So yun naman talaga ang theory. No? Theoretically, it is the goal of the firm na yung mga profits natin ay may utilize and maximize. So it's profit utilization and of course as much as possible reduce the costing. Yan yung paborito ng mga office na tinatawag na cost cutting. Hanggat makakatipid, makakatipid, and then maximize yung mga earnings. Again, nabanggit na kanina, corporations are either publicly listed or closed end corporations. So, ano ba yung publicly listed? So, public in the Philippine setting must be listed sa Philippine Stock Exchange or PSE. At least uh, requiring 200 owners. So let's say uh, for the company, uh, let's say sa Ayala Land Corporation, lahat ng ABM students, kunwari na lang, ay merong ownerships. Uh, despite the number of stocks, kung let's say 39 si Aro, 34 si Zamboanga and Cotabato or 33, sorry, 72. Isama na natin, let's say, mga professors, kulang pa rin. You need 200 student, uh, owners. No? So although there might be some principal owners who own majority of the company, kailangan pa rin ng at least 200 to be considered as publicly listed. So ano naman mangyayari, sir, kung let's see na bawasan naging 199, 198, then they must find name to become an owner as soon as possible or else baka madelisted sila. No? That's a big jeopardy. Pero usually, if you will search for the companies uh, listed sa PSE, it's not just 200. It's 300, 400, 500. No? Or more. So, continued. So, yung close end naman tayo. They can be formed by a minimum of 5 directors and a maximum of 15. So, usually five lang. Kasi masakit din sa ulo kung labing lima yung director mo. Uh, I used to work for a close-end corporation. So, ganun nga sila. Wala sila sa PSE. No? So, sila lang ang nagpapatak mo ng company. Well, it may own another corporation. Let's say close-end corporation ka. No? Uh, let's say Ombed Corporation, close lang siya. Let's say pwede niyang, uh, pwede niyang pag-aari si Vargas Corporation. No? It must be formed by at least 
5 to 15 directors. So parang separate na naman siya. Separate company or sister company. As considerations. Hindi pwede yung uh, board of directors ng Ombed Corporation will be the same as the Vargas Corporation. So corporations, both open and closed, have judicial and legal entities and have their own legal personalities. So usually, if you're going to file a case against a company, yung corporation ang kakasuhan mo rather than the owner or the CEO of the corporation. So a good example, kakasuhan mo, let's say, si SMDC, SM Development Corporation, rather than uh, si Bay Meare, si Hans siya tayo. No? Rather than Hans, you have to file a case against SMDC. So yun niya, the corporation can be sued. So let's say people of the Philippines versus SM Development Corporation. Corporations can secure loans and enter into contracts all with the approval of the board of directors. So, hindi siya makakapag-loan or enter into contracts kung walang bas-bas. No? Sa Tagalog, yan yung technical. Yan yung parang salitang kalye nila. Walang bas-bas or walang approval ng BOD. So, board of directors are in a sense, they wield some, you know, some amount of power within the company. Don't worry, I'll send you a copy of this PowerPoint. And then, ito medyo contrast din siya. Contrast din to. No? Government owned and controlled corporations. Akala ko ba sir, ang government eh, as per uh, unplanned economy, hindi sila pwede mag-business or minimal intervention. Pwede, actually. No? A good example is PAGCOR. And what is PAGCOR? For those who are not aware, it stands for Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation. So yung mga mini casino dyan. Dati, wal, wala na yata yung high ally. No? Yun yung sikat dati, high ally. Land Bank of the Philippines. So, one of the biggest universal banks. Owned by the government. And yung mga best friend natin. Uh, napag-usapan na natin sa FABM2 uh, during compensation, SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth, and uh, na, in the end, uh, ito, si Pag-ibig. Korean Heart yung kanina yan. So these companies get their equity institutions from the general appropriations law and remit their earnings to the Philippine government. Sir, sumakit yung ulo ko. Ano yung equity institution na yan? Tsaka, uh, general appropriations law na yan. Ano ba yung mga kiyaw-kiyaw mo na yan? No? So those two, no? first we focus on equity and regions. This occurs when business owners inject additional capital into the business and exchange for ownership. So, kumbaga, nagdagdag ka ng puhunan. Pwede ka pa mag-additional uh, pasok ng capital. Ganun lang siya. So let's say kung nita ka, yung kinita mo, hindi mo naman lahat gagastusin. So some form of the money will be returned to the business. Paiko. Huh? And the general appropriations up. The annual expenditure program. Some might call it the budget. Some call it the pork barrel, whatever. Pero ito yung, uh, ito yung mga pagkakagastusan ng national government and all of its instrumentalities. Okay, sorry. Board of Directors, so sila yung makapangyarihan. So usually, nabanggit ko na kanina, 5 to 15. So here on the setup, it might be a, a close-end corporation, so there are five of them. Oh, naulit. <laughs> I'm sorry, na, naulit yung slide. So ulitin ko lang. So the ownership niya, 51% no? for majority and 67% for the supermajority. So I'll just delete this one. Okay. So corporate entities. No? So what nangyari? Let's say uh, 
San Miguel Corporation. Sino ba ang alam natin na owner ng San Miguel Corporation? Diba si Danding Kokoangko. So many owner managers delegated some responsibilities to other individuals as the business environment grows and becomes more complicated. So hindi na kaya ni Danding Kokoangko yung sakit na ulo ng San Miguel Corporation. So anong ginawa niya? He hired someone to do the job for him. And that someone is now known as Ramon Ang. So these are people who have better experiences. Siguro hindi sila kasing yaman ni ni Danding. Let's say si Danding for the San Miguel Corporation. But he has better talents. Hindi ko naman sinabing bobo or tanga si Pohuang ko. But I think Ramon Ang is much better suited for the business operations. And then si si Pohuang ko will focus more on the vision where he wants to go. Uh, for the business. So these new managers brought with them skills and business expertise. Yun yung competitive advantage ni Ramon Ang. So yun yung ginagawa, ginagawa natin case study. For a modern business enterprise, thus leading to the establishment of several training schools. And bakit nagkaroon tayo ng training schools? Graduate schools have also been put up and established. Kasi yung training schools na yan are mostly katulad ng ABM strand and then sa college, no? College of Business and uh, Accounting or CPA. And then you have the graduate schools that have been put up and established which offer MBA and DBA degrees. No? Ang nagpasimula nito is Harvard University. So what is an MBA and DBA? Sir, yung MBA kabalik tara ng ABM. So MBA is Master of Business Administration, whereas DBA is Doctor of Business Administration. So here is an example. Ah, may naliligaw dito ng pusa MBA graduates. So these MBA graduates offer their expertise to the company, and not just for corporate purposes. They can also become entrepreneurs or so, yeah, nah. And then, ah, kinuha ko lang to sa Google. These are the DBA graduates. So, ano ba pinakaiba na tanda loong to? Of course, this one is one tier higher. Ah, these are doctors. Nah, hindi technically yun doctor na MP, medical doctor, but a doctor of Business administration. So, iba pa siya dun sa PhD in business administration, wherein it is a doctor of philosophy. So, doctor of philosophy in business administration, wherein you become an academic. DBA and the MBA graduates have the leverage either to pursue professions uh, or to, to continue their corporate career or to become. Uh, part-time or full-time professors. Uh, yun yung advantage ng MBA and DBA in contrast to the PhD in business administration whose focus is more on the theory and the academia. Uh, so the dilemma. New concerns such as devolving and even control to managers who have a relatively small stake or ownership of the Franchise. So, yung ibang mga MBA graduates who became CEOs, no? yung mga may letter C, CEO, CFO, CIO, COO, no? some of them are MBA graduates. They are given uh, some form of stake no? or ownership ng company. So, in the long run, eto mga technical terms na to, no? the owners are called the principals, while the managers are the agents of the principals. No? So let's say, sa San Miguel Corporation, the owner, Landing Kohuangko, is concerned, considered as the principal, whereas uh, Ramon Ang, you know, the CEO of the company, is considered as the agent of the principal. Principals employ agents to carry out their explicit wishes. So usually they do this because they can no longer handle the pressure or you know, they want to delegate some of their tasks. I mean, 
kung ikaw naman si Tanding Kohuang ko, it's much better to play golf all day long rather than, di ba? Mas sakit yung ulo mo sa pagpapatak mo ng business all day. Mas prefer mo na mag-report na lang si uh, Ramon Hang rather than ikaw mismo yung mag-iisip. The goals of both owners and managers are to maximize the profits and long-term survival of the company. As much as possible, no? Minsan kasi hindi sila nag a Iba yung goal ng owner, iba yung goal ng manager. But in reality, there must be an alignment. Oh, mahaba to. Okay. So, in order for this one to succeed, no? Yung dilemma na yan, matanggal. There must be corporate governance. So, katulad nala sa Pilipinas, there are laws. Remember, no? meron tayong mga constitution, revised penal code, labor code, family code, blah, blah, blah. And we're not, uh, we're not law students or aspiring lawyers. No? But for business, there is the corporate governance, which are a structure of laws. No? So, wala kang taka sa batas. Sasabihin ng iba, Sabihin ng mga business students, wala naman akong pakialam sa batas. But you must still have some form no? or idea about the loss. If not of the land, at least of your firm. No? The laws of the firm, which are governed by the laws of the land, which are based from the laws of the mind. No? The laws, rules, practices, processes, and factors used to direct and manage them. Ito yung mga rules and regulations on what makes the company uh, run smoothly like a well-oiled machine. Huh? Corporate governance. Yun. Kasi kung nagkakagulo sa company yun, then that corporate governance is considered as non-existent. Huh? Also, corporate governance involves a set of relationships amongst the company's management. So ito, no? ito yung parang binding agent. So, siya yung nag... Uh, ano tawag dito? Siya yung nag unite or coordinator no? of the company's management, the board of directors, the shareholders, and the stakeholders. So, siya yung nag... arbiter. Sa ibang terms. No? And one of the concepts is to appoint independent directors of pricing. 20% of the composition of board of directors. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan meron kang independent director per 20%. So, let's say lima yung board of directors mo, at least one of them must be a, uh, an independent director. On labing lima, then you must have three. So, here, one of the most successful companies in the Philippines is Ayala group of companies. And why? Bakit? Ano meron sa Ayala, sir? Bakit gano'n? Panahon pa ng mga Kastila? Nandiyan na si Ayala Corporation. And until now, it's still alive and kicking because of this. Because of corporate governance. Hindi sila basta-basta yung parang shoot first, ask questions later. Or sa Tagalog, tira lang ng tira. Walang, walang plano. So, mahaba yung topic ng corporate governance. So, I'll just try to make it as short as possible. So, ano ba yung components? What are the components of the corporate governance framework? Unang-una, FABM, financial statements. Huh? Yan yung guide ng company. Ano ba nangyayari sa atin? Kamusta yung mga assets? Ano ba yung profit and loss natin? Huh? Kamusta yung cash flow natin? Anong progress natin compared to last year? Ano yung mga financial ratios natin? Huh? Financial statements. The board of directors, on the other hand, isa rin yan sa mga key components. Ito, accountants to, no? business advisory. Whether by accountants uh, or economists or some consultants. Huh? Auditors, pwede rin. And then the company must also have its corporate governance code. Uh, ito yung parang constitution ng company. Ito yung mga rules, nandiyan lahat ng sets of rules and regulations that must happen. 
business plan. Of course, no? you cannot build the house without a, an ASPEM plan no? or architectural, structural, plumbing, and electrical and mechanical plan. And same thing with the business. You cannot establish a business without a business plan as well as evaluation such as performance management. Kailangan na yan. Okay. Risk management. Kailan ka susugod at kailan ka magre-repeat? Kailan? When should you go all in or when should you just run away? Customer relations. Remember, the customer is always right. So you need a good relationship with your customers. If you do not have good relations, you do not have a good CRM or customer relation management. Well, I don't know what will happen to the company. And last but not the least, internal controls. Remember, uh, four functions of management, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So this one is also very important. So lahat yan. Meron pang iba, pero for me, this is the most uh, most needed. No? Ito yung mga pinakailangan or most essential, sabi nga nila. 2, 4, 6, 8. So yan yung pictures of good corporate governance. I will not delve any further. You can just search. No? Gusto nyo. Pero ito yung characteristics of good corporate governance. You have clear strategy, effective risk management. Of course, ito yung pinaka-importante. No? Ito yung pinaka-importante. Discipline and accountability, transparency. And last but not the least, self-evaluation. Yung iba okay pa rin. Social responsibility and fairness. Before we end sa so corporations, you have the rise of the multinational and transnational corporations. So meron mga companies or corporations that have grown so big that their operations have encompassed several countries. Huh? Hindi lang sa Pilipinas, meron din sila sa Thailand, meron din sila sa US, meron sila sa China, Japan, etc. 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 Huh? Kung pwede lang pati sa buwan at sa Mars, lalagay sila. These companies are virtual countries by themselves. So yung, ama, yung wealth na naamas nila, it's, it's almost as much as that of a GDP of a small country. They are characterized as multilingual and multiracial and have their own corporate culture industry. So hindi lang naman Filipino mga empleyado nila, meron mga puti, meron mga iti, meron mga Chinese, meron mga Indian, and so and so forth. That's why it's multilingual and multiracial. So multinational versus transnational. So ano, ba, ano po ba yung pinagkaiba nitong dalawang to, sir? Hindi ko na na-hype yung ano. So for the multinational, meron siyang home company and its subsidiaries. They have a centralized management system and will face a barrier due to its centralized decision making system. So, yan yung characteristic ng multinational. Huh? Transnational do not have subsidiaries but just have many companies. And they do not have a centralized management system and are able to gain more interest in the local market since they maintain their own systems. Sir, hindi ko maintindihan. No? Tsaka maawatan. Ano bang example nito mga to? So for multinational, there is Nestle. Ito yung pinakamagandang, uh, for me, pinakamagandang, sorry, pinakamagandang example ng isang multinational. Pero Nestle Philippines, uh, Nestle, di ko alam yung iba, no? Merong Nestle USA, Pero siguro Nestle Canada, Nestle Mexico, Mexico, and so and so forth. No? Pero meron pa rin siyang parent company sa 
Switzerland. To centralize. So yung strength niya, it's also a weakness. Therefore, making it a double-edged sword. So, let's say si Nestle Philippines gusto mag-produce ng new product. Uh, let's say chocolate na lang. Then they must still seek approval from Nestle Switzerland, yung mother company. And transnational, a good example is Microsoft. So, lahat ng ginagamit nating Microsoft is based from the mother Microsoft company na nandun sa US. But they still sell some licenses all over the world. Pero lahat ng decision making is based from US. Walang say ang Microsoft Philippines, walang say ang Microsoft Thailand, or Microsoft Indonesia, o ano pa man Microsoft. Yan. Kailang tartiin pa lang tayo, mukhang mga kalahati tayo na lang. Okay. Transfer pricing. No? So, isa to sa focus no? between the two. Kaya natin pinag-usapan si multinational and trans no? si transfer pricing. So, transfer pricing is the main concern and conflict. Ito lagi, dito nagkakaroon ng tension between between the multinational and transnational corporation as well as their host companies. So, hindi natin masyado i-elaborate masyado si transfer pricing. So, I'll just give you the definition. Kasi more on accounting. So, transfer pricing is an accounting practice that represents the price that one division in a company charges another division for goods or services provided. Ano po ba yung sir? Let's say yung mga computers or cellphones na ginagamit natin. Minsan yung mga microchips niyan ay galing sa Pilipinas. Huh? So let's say nag-charge si Philippines kunwari ng 100 pesos per microchip. Huh? Or so, uh, semiconductors. Huh? Eh paano kung si Thailand nag-offer ng mas mura na production cost? Bibenta niya sa mother company ng 80 pesos lang. Or kung itatay, itatay ba't mo siya, let's say 55 baht lang. So, 75 to 80 pesos. Then, apektado sa Pilipinas kasi 100 ang benta natin. No? Diyan nagkakaroon ng tension. Allows for the establishment of prices for the goods and services exchanged between a subsidiary and affiliate and commonly controlled companies that are part of the same enterprise. So, isa sa mga problem ng transfer pricing is nakapaku yung presyo mo, hindi ka basta-basta pwede magtaas. Unless, merong approval ng mother company. And the main concern, yun nga, naulit lang, sorry, main concern and conflict between multinational and transnational companies. So, here is a quotation from Assistant Secretary Tony Lambino of the Department. The government is aware of the required investments needed to enhance our understanding of complex transfer price agreements and ultimately identify and collect from abusive firms. So, minsan kasi dito talaga nagkakatalo-talo ang mga company. And another big problem is that ang mga companies, pag nag-source sila ng mga items, one country to another, a good Example is that of Panasonic. So, si Panasonic, lahat ng mga switches niya, lahat ng mga aircon niya, galing yung, yung mga crucial parts, galing Thailand, sa Ayutthaya. The problem is, nagkaroon ng bagyo sa Bangkok. Binaha. Binaha yung planta, nasira yung mga items nila, and they were unable to make any sort of production for the next three paralisado. Baha. Diba? Nasira yung mga makinarya. Diba? Uh, yun nga, natural disasters. No? Yung mga discussion natin last meeting, price mechanism, yung queuing. No? 
wala makain mga tao, walang production. Ngayon, yung company ay paralisado, hindi makakilos. Kasi wala naman silang other uh, production plants. Like other countries, let's say sa Laos, or sa Vietnam, or even Philippines. Yun yung nagiging problem sa transfer price. You have become reliant on just one. Uh, let's say one company within a one subsidiary or a uh, affiliate or subsidiary or bibili ka muna ng mag outsource of to evaluate managerial and economic performance at divisional level kamusta naman yung mga division ano yung mga fast moving mo at ano yung mga slow moving items? Of course, to minimize. Ito yun. Ito talaga yung pinaka-main goal. To minimize taxes, duties, and tariffs from multinationals. Bawas taxes. To ship profits across locations for tax and other purposes. Kung saan sila makakapitid do. Kaya nga nagsilipatan ng mga company sa China kasi less tax. Huh? Mura. Ang manufacturing costs at that time. And number six, to preserve autonomy. Ah, hindi ko na yung discuss ko na. Okay. So, again, I think you're already familiar with the going on CERN, no? one of the GAAP. So, in a nutshell, going concern means the business will last forever. It's an assumption. So, pag hindi nag-survive or hindi nag-last forever ang firm, profits, sales, salaries, power, and prestige, among others, will become obsolete. Walang say-say kasi nagsara ang company. And not all firms make survival and going concern their priority. Meron mga tao na sabihin na natin they are born risk takers. In business, you must be a risk taker, but too much risk, uh, too much of a good or bad thing is bad for you. Masyadong kang maingat is not a good thing. Katulad din no, kaya or lang. And too much of a bad thing, mas susunog naman yung company. A firm that can be overly cautious with business price. So, ganun din siya. Pag masyado ka naman maingat, pag-iiwanan ka naman ng mga kalaban. If the firm is too cautious, it just might not survive. So, cooperatives. So, medyo may sina lang to. Most common for electric and power utilities and the agricultural area. So, one person, one boat. Pagpasensya niya na, no? Kasi yung flow natin is based on the boat. So, composition of the GDP. So, na-discuss na natin last meeting, what is industry? So, yan. A group of companies which produce a similar goods and or service. So there are three main classification of industries in the Philippines, one of which is the agricultural sector. Historically, the Philippines is an agricultural country. Huh? The industry sector and the service sector. Right now, dito tayo nakapokus. Pero, if you will remember, no, kung nag-quiz kayo nung walang analyze ba yun, no? napabayaan natin yung agriculture natin. Kaya ang mahal ng kaya ang mahal ng presyo ng bilihin natin sa mga pagkain. Kasi nakakatawa tayo nagturo sa other countries on how to plant rice pero tayo ang bumibili ng rice. So I hope you did that quiz. So, the agricultural sector is the laggard. No? Napag-iiwanan na yung agrikultura natin. Whereas, these two are 
growth drivers so umisipa no? extra strong like red horse no? so for our economists the industry and the service sectors are growth drivers no? ito ang tama but in reality kailangan may balance kailangan hindi maiwan yung isa so here is the Philippine share of economic sectors in GDP from the year 2009 up to 2019, based from statista.com. If you will notice, there is the decline sa agriculture. This one, the blue is the agriculture, the navy blue is the industry, and the gray one is the services. As you can see on the final year of the GMA administration or Arroyo administration, 53% lang si service at that time. Pero si Gloria ang isa sa dahilan kung bakit marami tayong all centers. Marami siya na i-close na deals. And then yung industry, medyo stable. No? Pero yung agriculture, unti-unting kinain. As you can see. So, 2010 to 2016, time na ni Pinoy. Uh, or uh, the Aquino administration. Tumasa ng tumas. Due to the effects of the BPO industry. Or service industry, for that matter. The BPO, the OFW, and no, yung uh, travel and tourism. Yan yung mga talagang umataw during the Aquino administration. 53, 55, 50, 56, 50, medyo bumaba, no? 58, 59, almost 60. No, until dito, 59.5. So within six years, the growth is at 5.5%. And ang kinain naman sa agriculture is 3%. Until nung Duterte administration, Single digits na lang yung service, uh, agriculture, 8.82 na lang. And the service has become 61%. So si industry medyo stable, <laughs> if you will see. Ito yung malakas talagang kumain na uh, percentage. Nababawasan si... Uh, agriculture. The agriculture sector. Ano ba meron sa agriculture sector? Wala na naman yung isa. Bukang nag-mobile legends. So you have farming. Huh? Sabi nga nila, magtani may bibiro, maghapon na kayo ko. Forestry. Uh, wala siya sa book, no? pero may research ko kasama siya. It's part of the agricultural industry. So maraming nagde-deforestation na mga gubat sa Pilipinas. So I hope no, ma-replenish niya mga bumi na yun. Mga troso. Fisheries. Panging isda. So uh, this is one of the problems right now in West Philippine Sea. Talagang pinax out tayo, nagjawo tayo na China. You cannot just go there and fish. Talagang ahabuling ka ng Coast Guard. And aquaculture. So, sir, ano po ba pinagkaiba nitong dalawang to? Di ba pareho lang naman yan ang inisda? Sa aquaculture kasi, pwede ka rin magano ng uh, aquatic plants. No? Let's say seaweed. Uh, si, si cucumber, uh, abalone, no? mahal yung abalone. In other countries, yung caviar, they are harvesting and aquaculturing the sturgeon fish, no? pinakamahal. Yun yung nagpo-produce ng caviar. And for the Philippine or Asian setting, tilapia, puso <laughs> yan. 
Eh, yung mga tinatawag natin pala isda. So, ito kasi naka-cage sila. Dito kasi, mag-ano ka ng lampat. Hunting. You know, sinadya ko talagang luma yung picture or painting. So, they are hunting animals. Hindi na uso ngayon yung pangangaso. Tiyatawag nila. But there are still some places to do that. Sa America, also pa rin yung hunting. But here in the Philippines, hindi siya ganun ka... Sabihin na natin, hindi siya ganun kasikat. On the industry sector, on the other hand, you have mining. May mga nagpapayaman sa Pilipinas, no? Uh, marami tayong mga minerals. Hindi nga lang siya napupuli utilize. So whether it's a good thing or a bad thing remains to be seen. Quarrying. So mukha lang maliit yun. Mukha lang maliit yan, no? Pero I used to ride that loader. You have to really climb like three to five steps, as you can see. So yung gulong yan, siguro kailangan dalawang tao uh, magka no? the wheel must have a diameter of around 10 to 12 feet ganun siya kalaki sa kapag nagpalit ka ng gulong nito abuti ng mga uh, 1 to 2 days manufacturing so marami yan discuss natin sa FABM 2 Chapter 10, whether it's toys, furniture. No? Ito kasi uh, semiconductors. Maraming semiconductor plants sa Laguna. No? Plastics, ano pa ba? Paper products can be manufactured as well. Marami. Hindi ka maubusan ng racket sa manufacturing. Actually, majority of Construction right now in the Philippines is for warehouse or plant or factories or manufacturing companies. Hindi na yung mga building. And construction. Ako yata ito. So they are actually they're building a warehouse here. Hindi lang halata. But the structure of the scaffolds uh, and then the distance between the columns it is a warehouse medyo mayaman lang si engineer naka crane pa no? but usually if you're going to build a warehouse you do not need a crane uh, siguro kung malaking malaki yung project then you will need a crane pero kung 1000 to 2000 square meters you don't Electricity distribution is industry as well. Water distribution. Ito, no, transport. I think this is one of the best innovations. Hindi naman siya talaga innovation per se kasi alam mo naman ng Pilipinas, gaya-gaya lang naman tayo sa ibang parts. But the carousel is based from that of Singapore and Europe, no? European countries. Maganda yung naging effect ng carousel for me. Pansin ko. Kasi rather than nandun sila sa right side of the road, nakabalandra sila, meron silang fixed link. There are still some kinks, but maayos din yan bit by bit. Telecommunications. Wow. Walang kwenta. It's not really walang kwenta, but because... The scenario of the Philippine geography is one of the hindrances. Pero no? mo, archipelago tayo, hindi tayo katulad ng mga neighbor natin sa peninsular Southeast Asia, like Thailand, Vietnam, na buo yung country nila. Tayo kasi, so besides Mindanao, tapos puro tubig. So for each island, you must establish a cell site of communication power. So magasto sa infrastructure. And last, uh, service sector, tourism, no? tourism. 
Uh, ito talaga yung group driver natin. Sabi nga nila, it's more fun in the Philippines. Pero nagpalit yata sila ng uh, slogan. When I was in Indonesia, I saw their commercial. Uh, commercial ng tourism department nila. It's unity in diversity. It's very beautiful. Professions. So here you have the gable and the stethoscope. So doctor, doctor, tsaka abogado or judge. Judge actually. Uh, hindi lang sa profession, no? even yung mga cleaning services, accountancy services, consultancy services. Uh, yeah, they're called professions. Yung mga artists, puso na rin. Repair of vehicles. No? So, ito, change oil, alignments. It's a form of service. At tumataas yung demand for uh, mechanical. No? Kasi maraming dumadami sa sakyan. And then the BPO or the business processing uh, outsource. So, malaking utang na loob din natin in a way kay President Arroyo, uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, for giving us the BPO industry. Siya talaga yung nag-close ng mga deals. Because during her time, TJ yung number one. Pero nasulot natin yung mga ibang companies to establish their business here in the Philippines. Kasi the English you know, of the Filipinos Pero pa rin accent. You cannot remove the accent. Yung B tsaka P. No? Pip, T. Marjarin. No? But still, it's much uh, easier to understand compared to our Indian counterparts. No? Namaste. Namaste. Hello. Hello. No? So, mas okay yung English natin. Without bias. And yung mga OFWs are modern day heroes. So service pa rin sila. Here you have a cocinero, uh, si engineer. Uh, pero actually safety officer to eh. And yung nurse. Uh, hindi ganyan po more mga engineer. And yung nurse. And you also have yung mga seaman. Yung mga DH. And so and so forth. Whew. So you have three types. Actually, apat siya, pero let's just stick to the three. Huwag na natin pahirapan sa rin na. You have the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary production. So, sir, ano po ba yung pinagkaiba ng tatlo na yan? So, for primary, you have the production and extraction of natural resources. For secondary, you have the output of the manufacturing and construction. Ano yung kanina nabanggit natin? Manufacturing and construction naman yung focus. And for the tertiary, usually dito yung mga services. So, ito yung focus natin. Kung gusto nyo mag-exam ng PowerPoint, then ito yun. No? The Gen Z's and the Social Enterprise. So, this is our special topic. So, kumalaling yung kanina. So, you, Gen Z, no? Kayo yan. Hindi ako, no? So, ito yung stereotypical picture of a Gen Z. Always looking at their phones, crouching, wearing some, well, trendy clothing. Hindi ko sinasabing ganyan kayo manamit. Pero ito yung usual interpretation ng mga other generations to the Gen Z. So pakita ko lang, no? 
So our source is the McKinsey and Company. So each generation has its own uh, context. No? Ano ba nangyari nung pinanganak ko? No? Ako na Gen Y or Millennials. Ano ba nangyari nung pinanganak ang aking magulang? No? So let's say your parents are Gen X or baby boomers. No? Ano ba nangyari nung panahon nila? Bakit ganun ang pag-uugali nila? Ano ba yung mga ideas nila? No? So let's focus on dito sa dalawa. Kasi ito yung dalawang laging nagkakaroon ng tension right now, which is the Gen Y and the Gen Z. So the context of Gen Y is the globalization. Kasi nung time naman ng Gen X, wala pa yung globalization talagang kanya-kanya pa yung mga bansa. So economic stability. So dito yung time na naging safe na yung mundo, no? It's the fall of the Soviet Union, nawala na yung threats, no? Pero dumating pa rin si uh, 9-11. No? And the emergence of the internet. Uh, right now, at, at this year, 2021, iba talaga yung impact ng internet. There were times na we're having debates. What will have happened if the COVID-19 pandemic happened, let's say, in 1998? Or 19... You know, mid-90s, 1995 to 1999. Anong mangyayari? Pangkong. No? Galunggong. Itlog. Wala na. Hindi na kami makapagkakal. Wala na rin kami news. Walang internet. Walang bisyo. No? So, the Gen Y has experienced the bridge between life before the internet and life with the internet. So kami yung merong old school knowledge and new school knowledge. Whereas the Gen Z talagang nandun na sa ano eh. Internet generation na kayo eh. So iba naman yung context ng Gen Z. No? Or also known as the true generation. You focus more on mobility. Diba? Yung mga pupunod pandal, Shopee, Lazada, Zalora, o ano pa man yan, mga app na yan, madaling kumilos. And Gen Z is digital or digital natives. Talagang nakatransition na kayo to digital. Kami kasi transition kami. Behavior. So, Gen Z's are more realistic compared to the Gen Y's which are self-oriented. Ako lang, ako lang, ako lang. Huh? But the Gen Z's are more realistic. Ito yung katotohan. Ito yung nangyayari sa labas. Gen Z's also like to make dialogue. Huh? And they prefer the commune. The communes. Huh? Kaya nga nagkaroon ng community pantry dahil sa Gen Z. Huh? And consumption, ano ba yung priorities? So yung mga matatanda, yung mga baby boomer, they are more on to ideology, movies, whereas the Gen X are more on status. Huh? Mayaman ako, mataas ang profession ko, no? mataas ang posisyon ko sa kumpanya. Mamahali ng aking sasakyan, no? luxury articles. Whereas the Gen Y, or the millennials are more of experiences. Ay, nakapunta ako sa Korea. Ang ganda-ganda ng experience ko doon. Huh? Or, I did some master's degree. And okay yung experience ko nung nag-aaral ulit ako. Ang sarap sa pakiramda. Ganun ang Gen, Z, Gen Y. Huh? Mahilig din kami sa festival and travel. Yeah, it's true. No? Kami yung mga nagpauso ng mga biyahe-biyahe. Travel groups and the flagship. For us, si Gen Z, iba ang priority kayo. You prioritize the truth, being unique. Kaya nawala yung mga brands. You prefer something simple, but very uh, elegant. No? Ganun yung preferences niyo. 
Mahilig din kayo sa Anli. <laughs> Anli rice. Anli. Anli some cute, no? And ethical. You prefer ethics among others. So, ito yung motto ng Gen Z. The truth will set you free. Yan yun. Ito yung further explanation of which. Dun sa... Ito ano? Sa behavior. So, ano daw yung undefined ID? Don't define yourself in only one way. So, marami kang definition sa sarili mo. You might be wise to some people, pero sa iba, you might be more expressive. Ganun siya. No? You always express the individual. Kung sino ka man, what are your interests? Yun yung, that's the way you define yourself. Communaholic, no? radically inclusive. So, connecting through different routes. So, if you smell some BS, then you don't like that community. There is the uh, inclusivity. Katulad nga ng community pantry. You want truth to be revealed na nagugutom ang mga tao. And community pantry is one of the ways that you have thought of para makatulong sa mga nangangailangan. Dialoguer. Have fewer confrontations and more dialogue. So, unlike the previous generations na mahilig makipagtalo or makipag-away, you prefer some, you know, a dialogue, an exchange of ideas and understanding the different groups between, let's say, you and your parent or you and your not really enemy, pero siguro hindi natin kasundo. No? And realistic. Live life pragmatically. You always believe that there is truth behind all things. And not all of the truth that you know is the only truth that exists. No? Maraming. There are different truths. Kaya niya ito sa dialogue. So, as you can notice, puro to truth, 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 truth. Huh? So the search for the truth is at the root of all of the behavior of generations. Generation C. So bakit magandang combination ang Gen C sa social enterprise? One, because there is that inclusivity and diversity. You are ready to accept the different truths. You are more welcoming to other people of different backgrounds, of diverse backgrounds, whether Manyan or Latinas, no? especially say U.S. or here in the Philippines, whether you have a Korean background, uh, Korean ancestry, Japanese ancestry, Chinese ancestry, or no? Manyan. You are welcome. You are welcoming these people. Feminism. No? Lahat tayo, tayo, tayong tatlo nandito. No? Ay puro mga lalaki, pero we have to acknowledge that this generation accepts girl power. Ibang-iba no? na yung panahon ngayon. Mas malaki na sumweldo ang babae kaysa sa lalaki. And why? Punta ka ng opisina. Sino makikita niyo? Puro babae. Nasa ng kapangyarihan? Nasa opisina. Sino may hawak ng kapangyarihan? Kapabae. Tayo mga lalaki, inuutusan lang tayo. Under. So, feminism is one, again, of the advocates of the Gen Z's. Digital revolution. Iba talaga yung kapangyarihan ng cellphone. Mawala na lahat. Huwag lang ang internet. Ah, uh, yun talaga yung impact ngayon ng mga that's life, no? Even us, the millennials, there are times na we think about it. Dati kaya ko naman mabuhay ng walang internet. No? Before nagkaroon ng Android phones, you don't really need to connect to the internet. Maglalag-in ka pa sa internet cafe para lang mag-internet. No? Or sa bahay, uwi ka. 
para lang magpukas ng Facebook or Friendster. But nowadays, information is very raw. Ang bilis. Kung sa may cellphone mo, kung nakakonek ka sa Wi-Fi, kita mo kaano ka information. And that is digital revolution. And then, number four, technology for social media. You utilize technology very well. Iba talaga ang humawak ng technology Gen Z. And we have to acknowledge that. No? Kahit ako napag-iwanan na ako ng panahon. So, yung PowerPoint ko, no, nagugulat ako, nakakanva na. Wow, kanva. Noong time namin, yung ano lang, Google Slides. Or you have to download the free template. And transparency. Again, the truth will set you. Huh? That's why social entrepreneurship is all about transparency. Huh? No BS. Okay. What is a social entrepreneurship? Huh? Tanong nung pusa. Oh, haba. Okay. So it is the process by which Individuals, groups, startup companies, or entrepreneurs develop, fund, and implement sustainable solutions to meet social, cultural, or environmental issues. So, ito yung mga focus natin. Social, cultural, or environmental issues. So, ano po ba yung form ng social entrepreneurship? Pwedeng soul, pwedeng partner, pwedeng corporation. No? Pero, kailangan meron kang sustainable solution. Hindi yung profit making lang ang focus. Huh? So, ang nagpapatakbo ng isang social entrepreneurship is a social entrepreneur. And what is that? Huh? These people combine commerce and social issues in a way that improves the lives of the people connected to the cause. Huh? So, yun yung goal niya. Kumita siya, pero makatulong siya sa mga social issues. Huh? Para, let's say, makatulong sa mga tao, or may matulungan sila mga charity institutions, and not just to earn money. Next. What is a social enterprise? So, medyo mahaba, pero I'll try to explain it as short as possible. An organization that is formed to meet a social or environmental challenge. So, yun yung pinaka-focus niya. Challenge. No? Pag walang challenge, walang enterprise. That streamlines its operations and supply chain to maximize social impact and minimize the use of resources that uses a sustainable, replicable, and potentially scalable business model. Ibig sabihin yung, model, yung business model niya ay sustainable. Huh? Pwedeng tumagal, pang matagalan, madaling gayahin, replicable, and scalable. Madali mong malaman kung hanggang saan ang limitation. It is an improvement of the NGO set. Uh, that are non-profit. No? Ano yan eh, humingi lang yan. Uh, wala silang income streams. Was born to respond to a need to adapt to the market conditions and structures. So, yan na, no? So, not just maximizing profits, but also kailangan there are benefits to society and the environment. So, hindi lang money ang focus niya, but rather the triple bottom line. Nakakatulong ka rin sa society and also the environment. So, some of their profits are principally used to fund social programs. So, hindi lahat ng kinikita nila ay kita. Ibig sabihin, meron silang nakatabing profits no, or allotment para makatulong sa mga nangangailangan.
Unlike a charity, social enterprises pursue endeavors that generate revenues, which cancel their social costs. So, ito yung nagpasimula. No? He is the father of social enterprise, Muhammad Yunus. So, he is an economics professor and the father of social enterprise. Pumala siya. Siguro ibang tao magiging father of social enterprise, pero it will be much later. He won the, Mag the Ramon Magsaysay Award in 1984 and the Nobel Prize in 2006. So, based sa kanya, no? according to him, social enterprise is the one with, that has a corporate setup and has social objectives of maximizing the economic benefits of the poor rather than maximizing profits. So, remember yung slogan dati ni ERAP. ERAP para sa mahirap. No? Kaya nga nanalo si ERAP. Era para sa mahirap. Hindi naman niya sinabing era para sa mayaman. Era para sa mamamayan. But he focused on the poor. So I think ganun din ang focus ni Pamitius. Economic benefits for the poor. No? Yun yung focus. Secondary lang si profits. And one of his creations is the Grameen Bank. And would you believe na itong banko na to wala pa silang mga loans na nag-expire or na hindi na bayaran? Laging on time magbayad ng mga mahihirap. And why is that? Kasi ang mindset ng mga mahihirap, pag nawalan sila ng tiwa, pag nawalan ng tiwala sa kanila yung Grammit Bank, saan pa sila makakaupa? Masisira yung pangalan. Masisira yung credibility. That's why it's very important to pay on time. So, a social enterprise needs funding agency that made use of technology and social networks. So this is known as crowdfunding. So meron mga business na hindi natin walang pera or salat no? due to scarcity of resources, economics. So, they sometimes rely on crowdfunding. And what is crowdfunding? It can be in the form of donation, reward, equity, or lending. Oh, yeah. And one of the most famous examples is Kickstarter. So ito, sample na lang to. No? Tatap slide. Examples of a social enterprise. Many social enterprises successfully maximize improvements in social well-being. So, one, marami example. Pero is, ito yung mga good examples. So, Warby Parker. I'm sorry. So, Warby Parker is a eyewear company. So, pag bumili ka ng dalawang salamin, magdodonate siya ng dalawa red. Magdodonate din siya ng pares sa mga nangangailangan. So, you have to buy a pair in order for them to give a pair. So, parang buy two, give two sila. And website. I'm not sure kung meron ng gumagaya nitong ganitong social enterprise sa Pilipinas, pero so far, I don't think so. The state, right? state is a backpack manufacturer that will hand deliver another backpack to a child in need while promoting and enabling education and community inclusiveness. So if you buy one state bag, magbibigay sila ng isa pa sa ibang bata na nangangailangan. Huh? Also, those who uh, manufacture the bags are parents of those children that need these kind of bags. Huh? Yung mga nandun sila, galing sila sa mga shanty, kaya tawag sa US. 
hindi siya squatter's area. Squatter yung tawag sa Pilipinas, but in the US, it's called shanty. So, you can rely, you can know for a fact na matibay yung mga bags nila kasi if they will give those bags to their children, kailangan matibay to resist the wear and tear. So, here's the website, statebags.com. So, kung ang Pilipinas ay may sana all, no? ang gana ay may zakon, no? So, solving a burning issue with smokeless. No? Yan yung maganda sa kanya. Iba naman yung focus niya na more on the environment rather than the social enterprise. Okay, naman dito. Okay. Solving a burning issue with a smokeless, environmentally friendly product. Yun naman yung focus niya sa social enterprise. With social impact by using discarded coconut pods. So, I'm sure meron pa siyang ginawang manufacturing process kasi hindi naman ganito ang shape. addresses both health and environmental issues. Yan naman yung social enterprise concerns niya. So, yan yung website. So, just very, no, sa Thailand. So, this is tutulong siya sa mga magsasaka to produce healthy organic farming products. And here's the website. So, this one, iba naman sila. Munti Gunu is in Bali, Indonesia. So, teaches the impoverished villagers in the northeastern part of Bali who used to beg in tourist hotspots to instead earn their livelihood by using sustainable farming methods to grow rosella tea, cashew nut, palm sugar and moringa. So, imbis na mamalimos, no? Kasi dati yun yung ginagawa nila. Mamalimos lang sila. No? Tinuruan sila magtanim. No? Yung mga kababaihan nagtatanim or mga baliktad, yung mga kalalakihan tinuruan magtanim. No? Ng itong mga product na to. Rosella P, Cash Nut, Montreal, and Moringa. Yung mga babae naman ay naging tour guides. And they also were taught, uh, they were also taught to do handicraft. Yung mga lalaki, tinuroon nila magtanim. Yung mga babae, tinuroon nila maging uh, tour guide. Tsaka, kumuha uh, ng mga handicrafts. Uh, mga bayong bags, and tour guides. So, so here's the website. So, so ito, Pilipinas. No? Okay. So this one is bomb bike. So actually, nakita ko yan one time. So it aims to make the greenest bikes on the planet. So, so far, yung katawan, okay naman yung bambu. But I think sa wheel sila nagkakaroon ng problema sa kasi years. Medyo mahirap. <laughs> So, for now, dun muna sila sa free. And that's the website. Kaya ni Bating is one sa mga uses local and indigenous ingredients source from organic farming communities. So, yun naman yung social enterprise. Yan nakatulong sila sa mga mga Provides housing and sustainable livelihoods in certain rural villages across the country. So, isa pa yan tulong nila. No? Housing. And there's the website. 
liter of light. No? Ito yung medyo sumikat. Designed and developed by MIT students. Hindi ko lang sure kung Mapua Institute of Technology or Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Regardless, this movement grew to brighten not just the homes in the Philippines, but also in Indonesia, India, and even as far as yung mga mayayama na bansa katulad ng Switzerland. Siguro medyo malayo sila sa power. So, ito yung mga projects na ginawa nila sa mga spotters. Huh? Ito yung flight. Pupunta sa mga bubong, lalagay mo yung bote. May ilaw ka na. And then this one, sa luneta naman, the largest solar rosary in the world. Here's the website. Liter of light. Okay, no, patapos, tapos na tayo, 100 pages. Mini task, no, individual. No, pakisagot na lang. I'll send you the screenshot later. So, don't worry. Wala namang ano dyan, no? wala namang tama o mali. So, just submit this one. May scoring, pero... What's important is you submitted the main task. And then, ito nga, no? So, pag-usapan nyo muna kung anong gusto yung quarterly assessment. If you will prefer to take an exam na lang. No? Pero kung ako sa inyo, medyo masakit lang sa ulo, pero mas sure ball ang gumawa ng social enterprise proposal. So, yung mga pinakita kong example. Yun yun. So, proposal lang siya, hindi siya business plan. Kasi ito lang yung gagawin natin. Executive summary. Actually, mission statement, hindi pa nga masyadong alam mo. Company background, product description, competitor analysis, SWOT analysis, 